product goal that I'm trying to build is a basic CRUD app. I should have like a compensation table. So like, this is a nice graphic, but like just yeah. start out a compensation table, um, kind of double click into a single uh, like offer view. Um, I should be able to create an offer. So upload an offer, like a PDF type of thing. Um, and that's really like the the MVP that I'm trying to build. Try levels.fy, but for doctors. Like imagine you're talking to just an insanely knowledgeable person, right? Like if you're talking to, like if I were talking to a senior engineer at, I would just, this is what I would tell them, right? Levels.fy yeah. for doctors. And then they would do all of the research to figure it out. I wouldn't ask them. Uh, and so, yeah, and then this is honestly like when founders pitch me, the best pitches are kind of like when they're just like, it's this, but that. Um, Yep. it saves so much time right uh in terms of like the business model and like lead gen and like all these questions are asked yeah so like so let's see what happens let's see what happens what what's interesting to me is that basically gpt4 has no idea what we are trying to actually do right um like you're giving it a hint um mm -hmm. but like you haven't really specified like you know all these questions around like you know, is it bootstrapped? Is it venture funded? Is it a startup? Is it, you know, like, are you building it for somebody else? Like, but it just sort of figures out um, a lot, a lot more. It doesn't get the the fact that we just want the code, basically. Like, I would say, like, you know, set of instructions to, I mean, it, it, maybe it's just not going to get the fact that, like, what you need is a Flask app, you know? Um but I mean, the closest part would be to choose the technology side. Uh, maybe just ask it, um, you know, what what technology stack, um, you know, what technology stack would I use or, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically gonna give you a front end and then back end it's gonna ask you to say like Node, Python, Ruby maybe. No, it's really biased towards JS, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad approach, I think. I mean, it kind of shows you where the world is headed <laughs> because these are definitely answers that are accurate for 2021, but not 20. Like I I learned to code in 20, 2008 or nine or something, right? So I'm like, like no, you know, not a lot of kids are learning like Rails and Python, like for, for app development at this point. Uh, like React and Node is definitely like the right uh, answer. So cool. Okay. I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, it kind of tells you uh, that we basically are going to want sort of like this React Redux sort of front end uh, and then node back. And the thing I would disagree with it the most is probably the hosting provider. AWS is like way too much. Heroku is better. Um, there's even newer services like the the one that people recommend and Heroku is probably still the default, but a lot of people have recommended render.com. Mm. I wonder if you could ask it, like, what about render.com? <laughs> and see if it has a has an opinion. But, you know, now we're cheating, right? Because it's like, this is knowledge that I have that isn't, you know, would not have come up. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I mean, maybe code, like code to build levels.fyi for doctors, you know, deployed you know, in, in, you know, React, Node.js, MongoDB, deployed, you know, on render.com. This really is like the vast majority of the decision. Like it really is like, this is not 80% of like architectural decisions, right? It's kind of like, are we building it with wood or concrete? You know, like ideally would ask clarifying questions, it, you know, basically say like, I, I can't answer this well enough unless you tell me X, Y, Z. Let's create a new folder and everything. But no, this is good progress. I mean, the fact, create React app is the right command. I mean, that, that is the, what I would, what, what I would probably recommend. So, and I'm more, I'm learning too, because I'm really bad at React. I actually don't like it, even though Gumroad is in React, so. So it's, it's asking you to create, okay, that's interesting. Create two front folders with the front end in front of them, another for the back end. All right. You know, like, so it, it's sort of like once once this stuff gets good enough, the, the next step is pretty obvious, which is like, you'll be able to basically just like copy the, all of this into yeah. like auto terminal, right? So here's what I would do. I would literally, and this is, I would literally copy that 
and just paste it and don't give it any context just paste the uh it's there just the air yeah literally just the air i don't know if how they have figured this out either they trained it like this with rlf and jeff uh that's my guess actually um and so this this is the part where i feel like ai will help a lot with right which is like you're not actually doing anything now yeah you're just going through the motions of downloading a piece of software yep. and then you'll, you'll get another error. Um, Remove to trash. All right. So now follow. So, you know, it's, it is. All right. There we go. So cool. Install it globally and verify. Error. Error. I mean, so, you know, similarly, you could literally just paste this. I would recommend just doing like sudo. Normally, when it says like a permission, like the operation was rejected by your operating system, it just basically means yeah. ma ma Macs are pretty uh, 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 defensive. So, this is basically to prevent you from like fucking up your computer, right? With like some internet command. Uh, uh, already exists all right well that's good i mean that means you already have it so cool so yeah then you basically just have to go back and do that again welcome to being a senior engineer at facebook <laughs> it's like this is the job of a software engineer that gets paid five hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, how long until I can apply? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay. yeah, so I mean, did you did you do that npm in it as well? You did that. Uh... Oh, so you just make sure you're in the back end folder when you do that. It says navigate. Oh, because you want to be in those two folders. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So either you delete those three files or you can just move them uh, manually. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah, I would, I would just yeah move all three. Yeah. Uh, and then you want to... That was in the front end. So you want to move that to, those files to the front end folder. I think you move them to the, to the back end. You're right. I did. There we go. Now I need to navigate to the back end. All right. Uh, that note. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's all it does. I guess it's just creates the package.json. Sure. You have the front end app. You have the back end folder. Yeah. Make sure you're in the back end repo. I think when you do before you uh, before you do that. Is that how you how do I check Express? Just want to check real quick. package json file yeah you're right okay i did okay. well the, yeah the, i would probably run that uh i would i would just run that again the whole npm install just in case okay um and does it say you go to the back end navigate to the back end folder Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Now you have, yeah. So basically, basically you have the package.json file, which tells it what to install, uh, but you didn't actually run the command in the backend folder. So you didn't have, basically you'll, you'll know because you didn't have the package.lock file. Mm. You click on the lock file. It's a lot bigger of a file. I see. And it, it's actually what's downloaded. Like, because all of, you know, all of these, the, you, you only have three or four packages you need. But then those packages have their own dependencies, right? And so yeah. it's sort of touching the tens of, you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of lines of code. Um, and that that's where the complexity comes from. It's like you're actually building an app with like millions of lines of code. It's yeah. just all just like you think it's like 20 lines of code. It's all abstracted out. Okay. Yeah, cool. Server.js in the backend folder. Cool. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, 
Okay, copy and paste it. Create Envira variables of MongoDB. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's see how to. How do I get a? I would probably just ex uh, ignore that for now. Okay. DB part. I would just try to deploy, get something, you know, deployed somewhere. Yeah. Get repository. Okay, for this, um, I need a backup, right? I th yeah, I think you were gonna wanna, yep, exactly. Nice. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, just do those. Yeah. That adds all the files. This will commit it to Git locally because I don't think you you know all it, this is just purely Git local. Um, Should I go add one on the? Yeah, I, I yeah I, I would yeah. Let's do I, I Render is gonna basically pull it from there. I heard that in my repository. Hold on. I tried to create one the other day, but let's just call it. And then basically you just want to do that second set, the push an existing repo from the command line. You can literally just hit that copy button. Uh, I think you. it'll just, and then paste those three. It should just do them all. Uh, so front end deployment. All right, let me go create an account on render. Yeah. Uh, let me get started. Let's see. Yeah, what I find amazing is normally you would use render, like you would use their onboarding docs or their help center, right? Or their whatever, their readme. And like, you're actually, we're using <laughs> ChatGPT. Um, like ChatGPT it like, it has replaced their own help desk. Right, right. Like just a fascinating, it's like Google, you know, just like, you know, no, no website has their own search. It's like, maybe one day you don't even need your own help center. <laughs> like, yeah. No one, like the help center is purely for Google scraping it or for chat GPT scraping it. Right. Uh, or right. AI scraping it. And you don't actually need a, uh, anyway. Uh, it's really so a reverse yeah. model. It's like, we've got uh stack overflow demanding that these companies pay stack overflow. But instead, That's it's going to be like gonna... render paying uh, chat GPT to like, please index my, yeah. <laughs> my help docs. All right. Well, now we'll learn how good it is, right? Because this, I do find it's not, it, it guesses here. Yeah. Uh, so look, yeah. click on new static site. All right. I mean, I got that right. Choose your Git provider. I mean. New static site. By the way, this is another th opportunity is like, you know, at this point, you you know, like, an AI should be able to look at your screen and just do, yeah. like apply the left to the right, you know? Like I, I often have to do this, like filling out like a form, uh, you know, and it's just like, why am I doing this? Uh, AI can easily like just, you don't even need AI. I mean, like you just read the text. Right. Uh, I'm sure it'll happen. Select All right. Branch. So connect to comp clinic. Um... Um, like here's a good example of what they should be using GPT-4 to do. Like they should have autofilled the name, you know, and, and stuff. But, uh, cause otherwise you're like, should I use uppercase spaces allowed? Right. Uh, okay. And then you just need to set the, yeah, the build command and the publish directory. Okay. Let's see the build command too. I had no idea. This is like the how people do it. They literally just have two different folders, front end and back end. That's actually not bad. I, like that makes that's that's pretty simple. Yeah. Oh, you, you put it in the wrong uh, the wrong field. 
Oh, the published directory. Wait, where is it? So, okay, so select your, the build command. Where is the build? Oh, there, there's the build command, okay. Publish directory, directory to, there we go. That creates static site, all right. Yeah, go to the GitHub repo. Maybe we forgot to push. I thought we pushed. I thought we pushed too. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, go back to the terminal. Oh, it's still building? What? I've got a stuck. Yeah, so just cancel this and just run the last one. There you go. Yeah, that's probably something to do with the weird auth password stuff. Yeah. Deploy started. Wonderful back in deployment. Click on new web service. New web service. There we go. Select your repository and branch. Um, can I do the same? Yeah. For my web service as I did for the. You probably, my guess is it's going to require you to do a different name. No, I'll just do back end. Work repository, build command, place build command. Yeah. My guess is this is wrong, but let's just do it. <laughs> like replace? Uh, my guess is the CD is not necessary. Uh, but I could actually, no, I could be wrong. I could actually, yeah, I could be wrong. It might be actually because <laughs> it's trying to do it from one repo, actually. So, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's right. Right. Add an environmental variable as a key. So this part, um, for I think you can just create it. I would I would ignore the Mongo part for now. My guess is that's like the next page. Yeah, let's see. I would ask um to for that the keys on the uh, environment on the left is probably where it will ask you for that. Yeah, so. Basically, I mean, there's, we can, uh, okay, what does it say? Now you have successfully deployed your levels.fy. Okay, so I mean, in theory, if you went to that front end website, uh, so that's the back end website. So that oh. shouldn't, even, I don't even know why that, that doesn't really even need a URL. Um, Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, so let's see what went wrong. Missing script build. So um, if you go up, yeah, so basically you want to run this locally first. Uh, make sure it runs locally. Um, so I would probably just uh, ask ChatGPT, like, run locally. Navigate to front end. Okay. I'm trying to start. Boom, awesome. So you, you see it, there's a similar error, which basically means that your your package uh, JSON is missing uh, that function. So if you go to, the, yeah, so you'll notice there's no, if you go to the other one, there's like a command. You see that scripts would test. Yeah. So that you need to create one. Uh, but if you, if you just paste it, if you just pasted this, I'm curious if you just pasted that error and if it can figure out like what, what's, what you're missing. Yeah. There you go. Boom. I'm at least as smart as ChatGPT. Yeah, I find that the longer it, the context gets, like, you know, the, you know, the worse 
the answers get, but so that's kind of why I start new times because like I don't know where I get React scripts from, for example. Um, but in theory, it's, I mean, it's roughly correct, which is you need if you want to do npm start, it always has to it's, it's that's what it's referencing. So you do need some start thing uh, in the folder you're running it in. Okay. Uh, I think that should be fine. Yeah, just remove the dot dot dot, and then I would update this. I mean, I would. Oh yeah, you need a comma. We could try running it and see what happens. My guess is it will fail, but yeah. See, so what does it say? It said something after the React scripts bit. It said, okay, so that's okay. That's in the different edit. Yeah, I would do the same. I would just sort of like copy that error, the React scripts error, and just see. Uh, yeah, like it'll probably be like, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. you're right. I wonder if I missed a step earlier where this would have been automatically installed. Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe. If I rerun some of the scripts above, it's not going to like duplicate the files if they already exist, right? No, no. It'll it'll, it'll error out. Okay. Or replace Do it. Do that or follow this again. Yeah, I guess it's just making an argument that you don't have react scripts but i've never heard of that i was was that in the in the i guess it's required for create react app um, so i think it was mentioned earlier like this is just a recent recent thing um you think i should try to reinstall everything from the the beginning or just oh yeah yeah definitely i have to do this many times um or i know just listen to it from the back from that it effectively what it's asking what it's telling you to do is doing that the node modules and reinstall them okay and then this time it should pick up i mean i guess it's not there's no create react app in the package.json uh so i don't know why it would why why it needs let's try it let's see if it'll work now That was the exact thing. So not working. Create a new React app to a different directory. Oh, a new front end. I mean, I mean, if you just look at create React app, um, it should just say what the node. What do you yeah, mean? I would just. I would just manually do in uh like if you go to create react react app dot dev if you just go to the bottom, it says. Uh, you know, upgrade using a single command. So I I assume you just want to do this run this like install. Function, which will effectively I think it'll also add it to your folder too. And my guess that's my guess is it it, it skipped it, it didn't get this part. Yeah. I think I should still follow this this process. I don't think you'll learn anything. I think it'll. I don't. I don't think it's accurate. I think, I think it's basically. I mean, you can ask it like, could it be that I didn't install Re Like, did you tell me to install React apps? Like, and then it might be able to tell you that it didn't. But that's my guess. Is it just it kind of skipped a step somewhere? This um, one. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't. So for some reason, when you did npx create React app, it, it didn't uh, add that. All right, should I try this? Yeah, let's do it. Install React script in the front end folder. Lots of scripts. There we go. OK. Yeah, I'm gonna run it front end server. Let's see what added a bunch of packages, high severity, but seems like it works. 
So now I'll just run them from start. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, you're missing, uh, basically what happened, I think, is that your create react app command did not fully succeed, which is why you're missing some files like create, you know, there's the same issue that is why you don't have this index up HTML file and why you didn't have react scripts. So basically, basically you have to just run that create react app again is my guess. Yeah. Like if you just, if you search this for just that create dash react, um, this one, um, up one more, hopefully. Yeah, so that that this command basically did not did not act, act actually work. Uh, so if you just run this again in the front end folder, yeah, this command failed last time. Is my guess. Um, yeah, so it looked like it succeeded, but it actually failed. So we basically have to delete uh, all of the, those three those three things and start again. For. Uh, Oh yeah, or just do it manually. Do it manually. Now let's see. Yeah, I mean the yeah the front end should be very simple. It's just all it's doing is basically spinning up a basic React app, and then most of the logic is actually in the in the back end. So yeah, so here it tells you npm start. Uh, so if you just run npm start, it should work. Cool. I mean, so you have a front end. Now we can either do the back end locally or we can do the front end deployed and then worry about the back end either approach. Um, I would probably see if we can get this running on render. Okay. Because doing the same on the back end is probably repetitive. Um, but let, let's yeah, let's see if we can uh, so basically if you go if you go to render's uh website again, um you know, they had this you you basically want to commit the code and it'll it'll automatically try to deploy uh I believe renders sort of default is to set up is set up like that. So if you just uh, push to GitHub, it'll just auto do a deploy. Okay, oh, it's the the dash a has to be before the dash m. Dash m has to be before the message. What is that dash a do? I typically just do dash m. Dash a is uh, adds all the files, stages all the files you've changed. You're making pretty good headway, I think. But the yeah. cool thing is, but once you have, in theory, once you have it set up, once you have deploys going, then it, it chat GPT is super helpful, right? Because at that point, you're just like changing parts of something that exists. And we're live. Yeah. I mean, so now, now let's do the the second part. We have 20 you know minutes. <laughs> I think we can do it. But uh, yeah, we basically just want to do the back end um, part First, of it, which, uh... mean, which means creating that. Uh, I think for now we can ignore Mongo. We can just do the create the backend piece and get something uh, showing up. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we can connect the dots and then we can worry about Mongo if we have time. I mean, how, I would ask it, how are the how is the front end talking to the backend? Because I don't see that. Um, still building okay yeah that's a long that's a long build I'm, I'm surprised you can't can you can you click on that deploy and see the c code as it's doing it at least okay yeah okay yeah well that's good news we got the error i guess you got to do the mongo thing for it to actually get get up um should I do that real quick oh let's yeah let's see if we can do that yeah let's do that real quick okay This is another thing that AI should do for you. Like next level autofill. 
I have to remember to try to blur some of these autofill passwords. Uh... <laughs> yeah. That's so annoying how they make you do this. I yeah, whatever. Some some uh it's gonna show up in someone's dashboard somewhere. I think everything's JavaScript, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Free. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're not at AI. AI does all the work. Humans fill out all the captures. <laughs> yeah. All right. Username and password. Wait. Yeah, definitely username and password is preferred. Way more convenient. Create user. Cop make sure you copy that. Um, just in case they don't show it to you later. Okay. Um, and then. We've added you. Yeah, well, you're going to want, um, what happens when you click cloud environment? Ah, fuck, I don't know what any of this means. Um, I would just do local for now. Okay. And we can see if there's errors with, and then just finish and close. It's pretty well designed. I mean, it's good UX. I didn't realize they they built uh, so much of this stuff out. Um, yeah, I would I would maybe ask Chat GPT at this point, like how to get Mongo URI from MongoDB Atlas. Connect. See, like, how would that be predictable? Like. I guess, but, um, and then what do you want? You're going to want drivers, I believe, the first one. Connect to your app. Uh, what does it say, though? Uh, why, oh, yeah, we already did the whitelisting. We already created the database. Connect cluster. Choose a connection method. Okay, where well, that's where we are. In the select connector application. So that's wrong. They missed the two. <laughs> so it missed that part. It missed drivers. It's assuming it says select connector application, but it's slightly wrong. Yeah. Um, however, what does it say now? It says, yeah, boom, there you go. That's it. That uh Mongo SRV thing um it's it sort of skipped that in the chat gpt but i would run that come on this guy or this guy uh the npm and sorry npm install mongodb oh yeah. see that real quick and then make sure you're in the back end uh the back end folder okay and then yeah in your end the end file um you need to set that where did it say here Just the whole thing. This is the whole URI. Yeah. Yeah. Equals. Yeah. Right. Just like that. Exactly right. And then you want to do a new line at the end normally just to have a, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Good. Um, then just make sure you replace that password with your, with the password. Um, it's, it's not giving it to you. So you have to go back and get it. Sure. Boom. Nice. Uh, yep. No, we'll find out. <laughs> and then, yeah, basically, I mean, that's that's all you needed. Um, in in theory, the rat, you know, the the username and the password are provided. That's all, all all the app needs. So I would just yeah push that. And, uh, mm. and you should at least you know or yeah that should yeah good push. Cool. And then let's see. Boom. 
this is the thing, right? It's like people say learn to code, but this is what it is. Like we're not really typing, <laughs> no. like we're not coding any really anything. It's just like this is the stuff that I think is 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 you know the stuff that's hard to wrap your head around. It's a it's a art more than a science. Well, the good news is the build is successful. Successful, wonderful. All right, let's see if it starts the service. Starting uh, the server, which all it does it seems like is connect to the Mongo instance and then i don't even know if it prints something or what but um in theory what you would do is you would basically have the back end you know fulfill an api right so it would just it would basically render um json that would be equivalent to like some segment of the database right um yeah. and then the front end would basically consume that json turn it into html css um and then render that and that's basically, you know, what levels.fyi is, right? It's not much more than that. Um, well, this is good. It's a better error. Um, so let's see if we can figure that out. Um, and just run, yeah, just run that and see see what ChatGPT says. Um, but it's, you know, it's basically just going to ask you to, there's some, some config thing that you have to set up on, probably on the UI of MongoDB. Do I not whitelist that? Um, you did on your uh, local, however, you know, the it's it's renders, right, server that's hitting Mongo. Mm -hmm. So you have to add uh, render somehow. So, oh, maybe it's in security. Um, if you go back, this is, yeah, to see now it's hallucinating a little bit. Like it's guessing, I think, based on what it said prior. That's why it thinks it's here, but it's not. I think you have to go close that. Um, it keeps bugging out. Okay. Oh, that's better. Yep. All right. Um, add IP address. And then... The current, do I add renders IP? Yeah, you're going to have to add renders. Yep. So how do... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then there'll be some, some way to do it. All right. So <laughs> that's almost definitely, I'd be surprised if that works, but render should have their equivalent documentation. So if you just go to render, um, yeah, I would, this may be worth Googling if you just Google like render MongoDB Atlas, my guess is. This is going to be hopefully something that just surfaces them, their own docs. And then, yeah, we already did that. Uh, return. Okay, guess, maybe, maybe my username, maybe my password was wrong. Yeah, know. username and password, but it still seems like it needs the network access thing. Yeah. Um, what is that? That's only. But yeah, I, I would fix those for sure. Username and create environment variables for username and password. I mean, no, I mean not necessarily. All it's doing is, like, if you could you go to the code that's that's hitting a MongoDB atlas. Like if you Google Mongo or if you search for Mongo URI in your code base, what the, I guess it's in server.js. So what is it doing? It's basically just getting the mall. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it ba basically it's just requires, it, it requires that IP thing. There, there was a way to do it. There was, I, I remember seeing, if you click a new IP address, if you go back to the dashboard um, and hit add IP address, I'm pretty sure there was like a, yeah, what happens if you hit allow access from anywhere? Yeah, that might be good. Just for now. <laughs> Did I say this here? No, I didn't, okay. Um, and at least that way should, you know, it should allow you to do more. Yeah, well, it, I googled it, and it looks like if you whitelist that zero zero zero, it should 
it should work it should just fix itself but you might it might require a deploy and um, yeah it should have fixed itself but I do manual deploy or should I just push? I would just do a manual deploy. It, it it probably won't allow you to deploy or yeah, I would just I would just yeah, that, that should be fine, yeah. And then maybe if you want to get um some more levels that FYI specific stuff, because it really it would all live within the server.js um file. Cause really like the you know there's there's like really i mean what do you need it to do you need to be able to like create records uh and then sh list you know show a list of the records right basically so basically. there's like how do i um how does it connect to the front end like like so the front end the front end the front end so the user visits the website the front which which is the front end right that's the front end website the front end then would ping the back end. So the front end, if you go to public uh, index.html uh, and you just go to the body, so if you just scroll, right? Um, there's nothing here. Um, so what you would want is, um, yeah, if you wanted to start there, what I would do is go to chat GPT and say, you know, um, after the create react app, like, update this file to ping backend and render list of roles and, you know, compensation. Build successful. That's good. Okay. <clears throat> Here, I'll follow your lead. So you, you say, should I do the backend first or the, the. Yeah, I would do, I would do the front end. Um, so I would just say, you know, up, up, I would probably copy paste that file in, you know, index HTML. Um, yeah, and be like, this is index, you know, this is front end dash public dash index HTML update to pull list of jobs, you know, parentheses, title, compensation from back end. Yeah, and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it worked. Connected to MongoDB. So, like, if you went to MongoDB, you probably want to keep this open in a tab. Sometimes it'll air out. Um, but you're saying go to MongoDB. And yeah, I mean, if you if you go to database on the left, I'm curious if you can actually can you add data or no. There's no way to add data directly. Um, oh yeah, like load sample data set. What happens if you hit load sample data set? That's my guess. If you hit browse collections, there's probably gonna be a collection in here soon. Yeah, there you go. Sample mflix.com, sorry. Got it. So at least this way we can potentially write some code to get whatever the junk is. Um, yeah, this seems right to me. Front end source folder. Okay. Or component into app.js. Okay. Other elements inside. Yeah. Sweet. And then really all you, and then I would ask it, uh, you know, code to configure backend server for to serve data at <laughs> API jobs. Um, to your backend. To what was that? Serve data. I'm just serve data at the API jobs endpoint. Uh, what was that? Uh, that's number five. This one. 
number the five point. Oh, here we go. Yeah. I'm getting that right. Let's see. Folder jobs at JS file code folder routes jobs. Where do I put this? Uh, I think you just put it. At the, yeah, I think that should be fine. Mount the jobs router at the path. Uh, yeah, I just put it there. <laughs> I that's a guess for me too, but that's probably fine, since that's where the other app that uses are. It's probably fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, and then yeah, you basically just want to deploy. Let's do it. Deploy yeah. that stuff. Oh yeah, add the files and then. Cool. And really in terms of listing the jobs, the only thing is, you know, you, you would basically uh you know replace some of this code from to fetch from uh the mongo database itself right um instead of just rendering this statically yeah you just have some code uh that basically takes a little bit of what you were what's in server.js to fetch you know fetch this uh the the same data um uh you wanna should we uh finish that last piece to connect the, the connect everything to mongo db and then wrap up yeah, let's see if we can do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, you, I would just say uh, code, you know, code to fetch jobs from MongoDB Atlas, you know, uh, you know, and I think that might, that's like, that's really it. I mean, that's. And it's probably in the jobs.js folder. Should I mention that? Um, I my guess is it'll figure that out. It'll up. It'll ask. It'll say you know update jobs.js. Let's see. You already you've already done this. You've already connected. So good. That's good. Yeah. You basically have. You just need that mongoose.connect. Um, Yeah, I would, I would just, yeah, I would just do that. It's funny because it's like, it's overkill probably. Like you don't, technically you could all do this all in a single file, right? Called server.js. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's giving you best practices. <laughs> so it's, it's like, you don't really need like a model and all this stuff, but it's good to have, I think. Oh, I need a models folder. Capitalizing it. And models. Is that normal to capitalize? Yeah, I think so. And I think in, in Mongo, Mongo syntax, uh, JS generally, it is uh, capitalized, the model names, I guess. Um, it's interesting as a, yeah, and like the files themselves. I haven't seen that, but yeah. uh, I assume it's the standard. So yeah, then basically just add that. And then, yeah, you basically just replace uh, that little bit of JSON jobs with uh, that try, that try loop, try catch. And I uh, do this just below here. You'll you'll replace. You want to delete that, that. Yeah, that one or comment it out. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then, yeah, that's basically fetching the jobs. 
from that database from and rendering it. And then the only thing you're missing is the front end isn't actually getting the data right from this. Um, that's the that's the missing piece for rendering it on that on that URL. Or actually from that in, from the state. Yeah. Yeah, so you just need to update the job list. Uh, so if you just go to joblist.js, um, you know, it's 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 actually already doing that. Uh, oh, yeah, you already have this code, so it's already there. Sorry, I forgot we already did this. But... Yeah, so in theory, yeah, in theory, it should it should work. It should get the 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 jobs um, from the from the JS. The only thing it's not doing is it, it, it it's it's assuming that it's it's fetching from the same uh, server. Uh, if you notice, if you go back, um, if it's if you go to a job list.js, it's fetching slash API slash jobs, right? Which means it would work if it's on the same server, but because it's on the, the backend server is a completely different place. You're going to have to update this. So basically you're going to have to update this. And I would ask chat GPT like update to fetch, you know, jobs from separate backend render web service, you know? Um, yeah. How do I, fetch jobs from separate backend, you know, render instance. Yeah, I mean, basically just that URLs needs to be updated. Yep, that's right. So you just have to get that um, base URL from uh, from render. And then just update that URL to the render backend. Yep, that exactly. That's it. Yeah. And then deploy it all. There's likely, you know, my guess is we've done something wrong, but. So, <laughs> Well, one of the deploys works. <laughs> the yeah, back end works. The... At the front of that could be that it's not going to get, it's not, the schema is not matching. But that's uh, the whole point of Mongo is you can kind of just update the schema on the fly. So it's probably render something, um, you know, but if you can't actually get stuff. So, okay. So, so I would, yeah, copy that error. Um, there's some something we did wrong. And that module not found can't resolve blah 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 yeah like that's the error. that's the error um that's really the problem yeah i think next session we could probably do like adding jobs you know like a form that people can fill out and submit to add jobs and stuff um yeah so what it's in front end source job list i definitely see that <clears throat> uh in your front end app, I see that too. Yeah, so I would just do do npm start uh, to run it locally, because in theory, the cool thing about doing having a back end front end right is in theory, if you're just pointing to the back end as a website, right, you can just completely run your front end locally, yeah, and just work on it locally for, a, and then you'll know it's going to work because all it's doing is rendering the same data, right? I I, just, I go to the front end, right. Yeah, you want to be in front of so cd dot dot. Oh, that's why you're not going. It's dot dot to go back up one level. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Um, and then cd front end. Perfect. Yep. And then, yep. And so it should error. I mean, in theory. Well, there you go. There's your list. So the reason it didn't error. So the good news is that it's not a local problem. Which means it's almost definitely you, you. Maybe you just need to run that npm run build. Uh, Wait, function. So don't, uh, where did this come from, though? I thought, well, we, were pulling, I thought we were pulling from uh, Mongo. Did we? we well, didn't. 
we're, we're it's pulling from the web app which basically means that your deploy succeeded for the back end for the commit that has the oh. job statically rendered i see so the this is not the the back end is not running locally um it's just the front end folder that you're running right um so the front end is pinging the that actual render server right now so the render server is broken in the sense that it's not pulling from um uh, from the mongo uh this is a different one but... the deploy the deploy failed yeah which is good i mean the, it basically um i mean the, what you have here is basically you know that your front end is working locally not on render uh so which means the build process is failing in render um that's the only difference uh besides that it's just running code so um i would run the build process locally um i would run that npm run build um and commit that and see if that fixes things um that's on the back end uh no you can do it anywhere it, like when you're when you're committing code it's going to commit to both and deploy both every time um you have only one deploy for both so yeah, I would just run that. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're within the comp clinic folder, I think it get is kind of it's gonna be run on that whole folder. And then you have to deploy that, see if see if that fixes the issue. Yeah, see it you haven't committed that file. Git add dot. You have to do git add dot. You can't skip dash A will not skip that part. Will not do that part, I think. Yeah, there you go. There you go. New file. Yep, that should fix it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. See, it's just small stuff like that, you know, like you didn't, dip, you know, you, you, for, somehow that file didn't get pushed up. Yeah. If, if if it's working locally, I mean the cool thing is you should if it's broken in production, you should always try to get the same issue locally, right? Because the feedback loop to fix it locally is going to be so much faster. And it, what it means most likely, if you can get it to work locally, is that there's some issue with that compiling build process. Um, ideally, we would live in a world where you don't have to compile, right? Um, it would just you could just like PHP, you don't have to compile, but that just means it's slow. Um, and JavaScript's like way too much code, I guess. Like it would be so freaking slow if it wasn't compiled. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't used to be. I mean, all this compilation stuff is kind of newish, um, server side stuff. But uh, I mean, maybe not newish now, but I'm sure people, if people watch this video, they're going to be like, no, you don't understand the history of JavaScript. But they're right. This is, this is it. This is the one. Yeah, I mean, in theory, if this works, I mean, there's always going to be more, but yeah, I mean, in theory, that means you have a URL, right? Anyone in the world can visit that displays the content that you want. Uh, ideally, that content is coming from a database that you can easily update. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's really the bare bones of like, you know, like basically, you know, if you're building Airbnb, right, this is basically what you do to start. Uh, it's just that the MongoDB would be, you know, listings. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, module not found job. So it's a similar issue. You don't have that model's job. Uh, is it in the folder models? No, it's in mode. So you just have to, uh, modes, you just, uh, yeah, rename that folder. So it has to be called models. And you're going to have to do a git add dot again. Yep. Commit, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I'm psycho and like doing git status every time. <laughs> That's That's a good agreement. Agreement. Yeah. Magic is nice when you, you know, you have faith in the magic, but yeah. that takes time to build. Uh, okay, back at it. Let's see. So it's still, yeah, the front end is really simple app. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's working in theory, right? I mean, it's getting something. It's getting the empty. It's getting the empty. 
uh, uh, table from, because it's, I, if you go to the code that you have, my guess is it's looking for a collection, you know, that like, this is what's nice about Mongo and what's terrible is it, it will, it won't fail. Right. Um, will work. So if you go to models job, I guess, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's doing this thing where it's, you know, it's like, it's there's this magic happening right where it's looking for a job uh but where is where is it connecting specifically to mongoose where's that code uh like if you go to server.js in the yeah you see how it has all this mongoose.connect dot 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 i'm pretty sure you need that um i don't know why it was able to get, try to get there without it um but if you notice, like, for example, if you go to job.js, it's doing mongoose.connect. Oh, it's not even doing mongoose.connect. Weird. Maybe, maybe it just works because it's it knows it's using the same instance, I guess. Um, so you don't need to Maybe do it's that. empty because there's no data that's got this model within. Yeah, and, and and it doesn't have yeah. So I would I would probably copy paste this whole thing uh into Chad GPT and say, like, you know, how to create sample data mongodb you know atlas for this file right basically uh how do i create the data um you know the sample sample data in mongodb atlas yeah it's just i'm well it's probably just got too long just that so I would just start a new one and literally give it no context and <laughs> just give it that. And it, it, I think it has an, it, there should be enough clues uh, in it with uh, you know, mongoose, et cetera, that, to figure it out. It, it'll be, you know, it's going to give you some of these basic things again, but yep. um, yeah, I mean, so you have this connect DB thing and then you really, oh yeah, the C, C DB, I guess um, it's, it's, it's basically writing code, uh, but I, I would probably do it. I mean, the nice thing here is then you can kind of update the code and hit a button and it'll just see the database. Um, so this is actually kind of nice. You can skip right, right to the add a add connect db.js. Uh... Yeah, the, the big, this one, yeah. My project folder, so I guess here. Um, I would just do it in uh backend. Yeah, backends, yeah, backends better. Do I need to run this? Probably need to run this. Um you probably already have it, is my guess. But um yeah, I think that's fine. And then you just also need that seed DB. And then one small thing is it's assuming you're doing it in the project folder. So you have to update that require job const job equals. Uh, you just, it needs to be updated to remove the backend folder. Just the relative path is one. Yeah, this one exactly. Because you want it to, yeah, it's already in the backend folder. And then, yeah, I would just uh, run this code. And this didn't have that issue. Okay. Yeah, that didn't have it. But I think if you just run that node CDB, um, connect DB is not a function. Like how do you how do they do the the dot end stuff in uh, server dot js? Is this, is this what that's server. called? By the way, is that... Mongo URI, yeah. So that needs to be updated. That that could be the reason. Yeah, try now. Oh yeah, nice. There you go. Sick. Good catch, man. Thanks. All right, so. Refresh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Boom. Boom. I mean, now, now I would go to uh, MongoDB Alice 
and just confirm like what data <laughs> that script that script did it properly right yeah uh, so we did it wrong uh, which likely means that's what should have happened <laughs> uh, now we know uh so you know it, it, it's like technically it works right so you don't even need to correct it necessarily but anyway i mean you have so what do we have i mean you basically can do whatever you want here right you can make it as pretty as you want is because that's just static html css um and then the back end you know it's it, it's hitting the back end the back end is just serving as a router to get information from the database the back end is nice to have in theory you could get rid of it but you know over time you want it because you want to do things like validations right um yes. if you're adding a new row you want to make sure it has some constraints um that's really why you use code instead of no code tools it's like that logic that kind of conditional stuff is hard to do with no code um right. and and uh but yeah, I mean, what else? I guess next time, if you want to do it again, we could probably in another hour and a half or so do like, we could probably create a form on the front end that submits and creates a listing. Um, to start out, like kind of copying their approach here. Um, I imagine if I added a salary, like you're saying, it would take me to a form. So I'll probably just have like an add salary button that takes me to a type form where they could submit like, you know, some yeah. key from their like job offer. Um, and like, I'll have somebody or like me, I'll just like manually verify everything and like myself. So like, I, th yeah. there doesn't need to be user accounts at this level. Um, and I'll probably find a bunch of, find as much data about like healthcare comp um, to like have something to splash on. But like once I have a thousand, you know, or some, some like strong number of uh, like sample compensation yeah. data, then I'll like start refreshing it on them. And the, the other nice thing is if you do it, if you learn these skills, like you haven't spent any money, right? Okay. Like if you were doing this with like all these other tools, you'd spend like a few hundred bucks on like uh, a month on SaaS, right? But anyway, I think we made some good progress. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've, honestly, like, I've never built anything with React Express.js ever. Like, right. but it's, I've done it in enough other, you know, stuff that it's like oh yeah i can i can re you replace this part and this part and like um yeah having like two folders for front and back end i've never done that before um no. but that makes it makes i can see why you would have like basically them completely separated and now i'm like oh gumroad should probably like we should probably do that at some point yeah and, and i like it like how we kind of separated like this is just standing up the application and the next session will be about like well you know, let's actually build a little bit more functionality and, and some logic into this. So it's actually useful. Yeah. To yeah. To me, I always am focused on getting a URL that people can visit yeah. that renders database data. Right. Because at that point you have everything, right? You have the database, the back end, the front end, and then the user experience, you know, you have the pieces of this entire experience. And then at that point, uh, yeah, you can make it pretty, you can add more data, you can do whatever. The idea is like, I'm gonna, I wanna give users a bunch of value that's kind of unique that doesn't exist today. And then also like, like have an add salary button so we can actually complement this with uh, this data with real verified salaries. But I need a way to like attract users to like get them to, to eventually like add and contribute salaries. So basically the idea was, well, I'm just gonna scrape a bunch of existing job postings from, a bunch of different sites that have like position job postings with salary data um, and then visualize that salary data based on like uh, uh, like they all post job ranges. And so um, that's like, what is the frequency of all the different job postings for primary care? Um, like what's the frequency that these ranges overlap? So um, it's kind of an interesting way to visualize, you know, that the most the, the highest likelihood pay is going to be right here. So what is it? 275k for primary care. OBGYNs are closer to like 350, and anesthesiology is closer to 500, based on like the density of the like job postings. I've used ChatGPT entirely to do job scrapers for both Doximity and LinkedIn, um, and most re recently, in like a couple hours ago, and only like probably 45 minutes of working with it. 
um, was able to put together this table. So I'm now I'm now feeling like a data scientist with uh, ChatGPT. That's pretty cool. Oh, so that's real data using the data in the Google Sheets. This is real data that I used. Yeah, exactly. It's just in this job scraping bucket. Um, God, GPT created all of this. So uh, I basically wrote a bunch of scrapers for job prompts. I'm curious if you have like the chat log. I uh, even better. I thought I might actually continue to do this over and over again. So I just kept pop copying and pasting. Oh, cool. All of the key prompts that I used. So there was like, oh yeah, nice. Probably twelve key prompts that I used, um, to to ultimately create the the scraper. Um, so on the scraper side of things, like, well, it's fun too. I'll have to like, I'll have to like rotate all these passwords again. But it's like kind of learning how to rotate proxies and user agents to like, <laughs> like not. I didn't know any of this, right? And ChatGPT was able to guide me through all of it. Yeah, and this is, I mean, the reason you were able, you wrote this code in the first place is basically, I assume you saw some sort of error, right? And yeah. and pasted that into ChatGPT and, and it was like, oh, this is what's happening. Yeah. Because I feel like this, what's, you know, like if you, if you pasted this into Google, you might find like a, all these results. But what ChatGPT does so well is it kind of tells you the context of like, well, what actually is happening? Like why... It, you know, it'll, it sort of is like, oh yeah, you need to, you're getting rate limited <laughs> by IP or something, you know, and you need, here's some Python code and like, yeah, it's just fascinating uh, how much better it can, it is at that kind of thing. Yeah, Pre exactly. You nailed it. Like previous versions earlier in the week, um, like after I, my own IP got banned, um, not banned, it was just like rate limited. It was like, oh, you could use free proxies. So I had a whole other file that was dedicated to like trying to test free proxies. And then if the test was successful, then you know, try to scrape. Um, but after like probably a half day of like banging my head on the you know table with that not working, I just finally asked Chad GPT, how the hell do I use paid proxies? And so it guided me to uh, like even with this provider, IP Royal, it's like here's where to go on the page, here's how to download them, here's, mm -hmm. here's how to so it's pretty incredible. Um, so that basically brought me to um, having, uh, in this case, I didn't go through it, I parse through a bunch of files, but um, you know, a bunch of different files for for Doximity jobs. Um, I did a little like little post processing on um, on Google Sheets, uh, and then kind of like just with what I had in front of me, started like trying to think to think through like what ideas can I put together um, that I can build a product around. So like one of the ideas, well, I'll just mimic levels out FYI in a way that makes sense for the healthcare industry. So that's why I got through this idea. And this basically says, given a specialty, given the job range and the frequency that that job range has, you know, where does, like, how does pay within this specialty? Work? Like, look, how does it work? Um, and so that, that's what this provides. There's another idea, which is like, you know, my friends are about 30 years old and they're just starting their, their jobs. Um, and so it's like, what does your 10 year kind of earning potential look like? I didn't really like this idea. It didn't seem as attractive as the one before. Plus I then had to also scrape residency data, which I scraped, I just like manually entered this, but mm. it seemed like a lot more work. So that's how I opted with like, basically just taking the data dump that I have. Um, which I think it's a few hundred uh, job postings with salary data. I filtered out the ones that don't have it. Um, and then this to basically arrive at my MVP. So this is my MVP. Basically now the next steps are, and what I'm working on right now is basically take the CSV, toss it into Mongo, render it. Yeah. Take that like uh, uh, Mongo data, put it into a table, render the table. Um, and then somehow basically take, this will be a fun one, uh, take this Python data uh, or Python code to like render this, this image um, within the browser. So the dumbest idea, which I'll probably just do is drop this PNG into, uh, you know, into the, <laughs> the page. But I think like yeah. the, the other idea would be, well, can I just select on these specialties and have it 
you know, populate, um, you know, like I would, instead of clicking Amazon, I should be able to click on like cardiology and that would bring up, uh, you know, a new tab in the same way that levels does. So mm -hmm. what do you think? Yeah, I think it looks great. I mean, I like how you've boiled it down to the components for the MVP and, and also like this, it's sort of like this progressive fallback, right? Of like, if, if, you know, if you, if you can do it with interactive JS, awesome. If you can't, it's still there as an image. So there's still some, something you can still ship, right? Uh, you don't have to like have this pie in the sky idea. Um, and yeah, now you have sort of the schema as well. I mean, you don't have to keep all of this in Mongo, but right. We can decide what we want to 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 have, uh, but yeah, we basically I think that makes sense. Like basically, the first step is to basically get ChatGPT ChatGPT to give us a script to to push all that stuff to Mongo. For this session, I think like to to build a product, I think like it would be you know a huge win um, for this call if we were able to like complete the the code to dump it into Mongo, render it in a table, and at least toss the like the PNG into um, mm -hmm. the, the view. Um, and that's a big one because it it wouldn't take long for me to like, you know, add a logo, uh, add a module to add salaries, store the salaries somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's like a, you know, a couple hours. so awesome. Yeah, let's try to see how far we get. Cool. Um, so where I left off, uh, just before we hopped on was uh so i asked chat gpt to basically import the csv um there's a couple errors i had to install like mongodb dev tools um it told me i need to like update the schema so I just asked it like will you tell me how to update the schema and asked for a row of sample data gave me some code my hunch was like there might be some cases where this data is null and in some cases where you know I want um, I want some sort of like required key, and so I had it fix that. Um, now I have basically let's go back here, uh, not the routes, but my models. So I have the model correct. Um, we have jobs referencing that same data model, and so I think the next step is to connect to the DB. And actually, now that the scheme is updated and the MongoDB command tools are installed, now I actually need to uh, import the CSV. So here we are. Okay, so now that I have them installed, you can use import command. Next, open that terminal or command prompt run the following command. command. Is that just, okay. I need to run this command. So this is my connection. No, uh, you, you probably don't want to be doing that in your .env file. Oh, I'm, I'm just doing it to copy and paste. And oh, got it, got it, got it. it. I'll eventually do it in my uh, um, terminal. So then my path to CSV. The path to CSV is this. Copy path. Do I need the entire thing or since I'm already in job scraping? Do I need job scraping? No, if you're in that folder, then you can just get everything except the file name, yeah. Okay, perfect. So do I need the slash? I, I think you can even get rid of the slash, yeah. Nice, okay. Yeah, super clean. Cool. See what happens. I love how it's like one line of code. <laughs> it's like... Not even any like I thought it was gonna add, like write a Python script. <laughs> I know, pretty pretty straightforward. It, it gave me the option. It's like either you can uh, do one or the other. Okay, so it says imported the document and zero failed. So I guess let's go over to the database, browse the collections, go to my test jobs. And here they are. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, so, so you know, these two that you were the ones that we added prior, right? I mean, you can easily delete them, yeah. Um, but, you know, if you're, yeah, there you go. Easy. Cool. Love Mongo, gotta love Mongo. Yeah. Now, let's see. Uh, so, we just changed the database. And it's all of a sudden uploading. Okay, what is rendering on the front end? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we just had job compensation. So we need to update this code to, I guess, render all of the data and. Yeah, like write HTML from, you know, Mongo collection, uh, HTML table. Uh, yeah. file and so it's it's kind of guessing but it's basically doing the same thing right it's just editing the bad that thing at the bottom it's instead of a list it's just going to do a html table how does it know i guess it knows from the top so yeah that's awesome i would oh. just i would just copy that table and just replace it with the table oh really that easy? I, think, I think so so yeah, I think that should work. I mean, it, it it guessed, I think, at the column names. So it might be off a bit, but we'll see. It'll probably just like have some weird, you know, nulls or undefined data or it nailed it, who knows? Yeah, I just asked it just before, so. Yeah, we got, it seems like we got them. Yeah. Awesome. And then in something like this, if you have it rent, like if this is just front uh, front end changes you're making. So if you run it, if you go to the readme and you just, I think we have the, the logic to just run the server, the front end server, then you can even test this like super fast without having to deploy anything. Oh, it didn't even work in my, uh, oh, I'm still in job scraping. So really, I can just go here. You'd have to run it locally, but yeah, you could. You wouldn't have to deploy even. So this is on the server, but if you go to your README, yeah, here you go. Uh, yeah. So if you just do npm start, oh. will it have? There you yeah, go. Will it have the data? Yeah, it should. In theory, I mean. It's it's connecting to exactly the same place, right? Um, so yeah, it should have the it should have access to the data. So if it does if it doesn't, that means the code is probably just incorrect. Yeah. Um, is my guess. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think you'd have to update any code in the back end, right, to get it to for the new uh, data. So yeah, I mean, I I think you can just render the the front end, and it should goes you know should be getting the data properly from mongo okay. uh, the back end would only be if you're now if you're looking to add additional functionality like a new route you know like a button that has like some like a new api request right a new api method Got which it. we'll do, may do later but so you're saying then this suggests that um is it like right there's here? something wrong with this uh yeah jobs dot map da, 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 da. so i would do some like there's yeah basically there's there's some reason this jobs is being set to nothing um so normally yeah just like console dot log uh the jobs variable i would console dot log data in that fetch jobs function uh and th that way we know because basically jobs is just being set to data uh so yeah you can just do data yep exactly and that should basically return that you know uh that table it's logged in the browser console so you would go to chrome re refresh and then uh it should be in the console so yeah there you go
array of 234. So there, so that 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 just proves that the data is there, right? Right, right. So now the only issue is effectively in that rendering. And this is like basically ninety nine percent of engineering. It's just like basically like where's the bug, <laughs> and just right. narrowing down the possibility for where it could be until you've like found it basically. Uh, and so, I just yeah, dump this whole code into. Um... Yeah, I would say that sure. And like, why is this not showing any jobs or whatever? Nice. Okay. This is my. So it doesn't think you're doing anything wrong. Uh, how do we, I want to know would, how, would, how we accessed it before. Did you say we can look at like the previous, like the previous code here? So you see on the right, you have an unordered list and that list is, you know, has a bunch of line items in it, right? So it's looping through the jobs and doing this like li versus on the left basically the same thing except it's creating table rows with the key instead of index so basically the difference is that uh you know you don't you have this you only have a job on the left versus you have job and index so i would just add index and, and make them the same and change the key to job dot you know index or index yeah instead of job dot id just make it index just to mirror you know what we because we know what we had before was working right in terms of rendering those three or right. two jobs uh and so yeah this should work if it doesn't work then my guess is that it's sort of then we might need to just refresh one more time just in case So uh, if you open up the console, hmm, weird. I would maybe do uh, go to your DOM and like go to like elements and like yeah view the view the T body and oh there there they are they're created so you just have to it's just that those those strings see this is like it just this is what software engineering is right it's just like figuring out what the bug really is. Uh, there's all of these potential culprits for it. Actually, none like so far, basically, like none of the code is wrong. Uh, so yeah, basically, instead of, uh, yeah, you change title to job dot job title. So it should just be job dot title. Uh, and I would just make sure, I mean, you could probably just tell, this is maybe a good thing for chat GPT to fix. If you just say, you know, this is the old code, this is the schema update. Because basically it just, it's just not accurate. Yeah, this is the old scheme. I think the new schema is, let's see. Uh, yeah, it is job title. We're good, yeah. Okay, so going back. You could print uh, in, a, in, a, in one of those TDs, like uh, just job, and it should just print like a JSON object, but at least that way you can, I think if you just said, yeah, job, yeah. We need to and I think it like this. I think that works. It's yeah. Sometimes I just try a gazillion things at once, so I only have to do one refresh. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, there you go. It's definitely getting the you know. It's a it's a it's an object with keys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's definitely working. You know what? It's just interesting that it. It looks like the keys have spaces in them. So my guess is that, I mean, this is a good one for chat GPT, I think. Like if you, cause it'll know what you're trying to do. Okay. Like print, print job and then it'll, it should, it should fix the code to do it. I don't do a lot of reacts. I'm not sure how you do a lot of this finance fancy like console logging. Probably six months from now, all this stuff will be built into Copilot too, which will be nice. I, I finally tried Copilot and yeah, I, I wanted a little bit more out of it. I wanted more of what I'm getting out of ChatGPT. 
Yeah, ChatGPT is definitely more helpful yeah. in my experience. Uh, but it won't be long until they're more closely to the yeah. Browser says. Boom. Simply remove this. Job list. Uh -huh. it's, it's, and new to cut out the headers. Irrelevant. Oh, we just removed. Yeah, see. Because I've been doing two, just like kind of like learn and sanity check, like what I'm seeing, what I'm getting back is, I'll come over here and I'll just com I'll copy on the right, like from ChatGPT, and just compare what exists today. Oh, fine. I mean, what's actually changing? The only thing it changes is it took out that job. Oh, that was it. Which is annoying. Um, yeah, I would say print job object like I, you wanted to print the job object so i would just ask ask it to yeah and that pre is just like it's just html for like code basically but yeah that's awesome that should do it and move this more more towards the middle. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, so you've confirmed that the data is definitely there, right? It's just job dot title. Yeah, it's not. It's not. But that's because you've converted it into JSON at that point. So that might be why. The job object is the, the column name and not job title, but a job title. body. Yeah, it's, it's, using, it's, not, it's not using the the uh, schema in the uh, CSV, or sorry, it is. It's not using the schema in that file, the schema file. I see. Yeah, you're right. It's Mongo didn't store the schema. This is like the beauty of Mongo, right? It just takes your data and shoves it in yeah. and won't. I really that. assumed it would like somehow store like the mm -hmm. the table name and the schema key, but all right. So yeah, normally if you wanted that, then you would need more than that one line of code, right? You'd have to have like a mapping basically. Right. Um and and that's that sort of deterministic software engineering job of like, yeah, you'd have code that sort of says right. this room, you know, this column in the CSV goes to this or translates this way for each one. Right. Um $61,000 a month. Oh yeah, this has been fascinating just look into uh, some some compensation data for uh Yeah, it's insane. Okay, so clearly we need to fix some of this. Um Okay, so I'm going to remove some of these fields. Like we don't need a uh, job description. We don't need a state we don't need URL. We should probably, you know, link the title and the URL together. In the meantime, let's remove all the rest of it. So compensation is good. Employment type is good. Setting is good. Create a date. Specialty. I think that's a good a good table. And let's see what HTTP says. No open, no assure. Something's off. When you delete the 
the you need to delete the headers as well. All right. We have a table. We have a table. Okay. Let's say perfect. <laughs> How can I make the table prettier? <laughs> or do, you have, do you have any uh, recommendations on how to render or make tables better looking? Um, I would just say with inline CSS, just to start, um, or with CSS, and we can see what what approach it's, it takes. Yeah, let's see what, how it determines prettier. It's a very vague, could be more readable or something. We'll see what it does, though. It'll add some borders. Add some padding, add some colors. It might do some odd, odd and even coloring in the background. Border. Okay. I guess within the source file. Jobless. Boom. Yeah, boom. I would say, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, create React app. I guess it's using dark mode, but you might want to just sort of set the background of the, of the, of the, of the whole uh, HTML to white or. That's uh, like 80% of design, isn't it? Just to, <laughs> no whites, no blacks. <laughs> yeah. I love I love using white and black, but lots of designers give me shit. It's fun. It doesn't exist. Black. You started as a designer, right? Yeah, yeah. I I was never very good, to be honest, but I have preferences, strong preferences, uh, for other people's work, I guess. Right. Boom. Not bad. That's pretty darn close to uh maybe delete the React bits. Just learn React and all that. Yeah. Where is, where is all that? It's probably in your index.js. Yeah. Or nope. It's in your app.js. Right. Oh, there it is. Okay. You could listen to it and add that each one. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, let's see how far. Uh... Do a like a P. See what it would do for a P. If you added like, it would have guess. <laughs> it's funny. Right. Yeah. This is oh no button or link maybe. <laughs> Nice button, funny. Yeah, I mean, you could use that button for you know, like a add add job or whatever. Nice. So we got a input field. We got a we got a job. Yeah, I mean, we could do that. I mean, that's really easy to do. To be honest, you could probably just ask ChatGPT to do like real time. You know, add you would okay. just copy that whole thing and just say like add real time. You'd probably want to move that to the job list itself. Is my guess that jobs list uh, file. Those those two the input and button, but yeah, let's see. You mean like here? Take it from here and yeah, move it to the job list itself. Yeah, exactly. Move this above the table like that, or what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. You're gonna have to wrap the whole return in a div, I think, because you can only return a single element. You can't return like a list, so you just have to do everything in a div. I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And that should it might look weird, but yeah, there you go. Okay, I'll add a should we add a filter or do you wanna move on to yeah, that? Yeah, honestly it probably will take like 
not not too long. So yeah, let's just do it now. I think just copy that whole thing and just I would I would copy the whole file and just maybe even in a new window so it has more context to use. But you could even just yeah, just do like add real real time, <laughs> add front end, you know, JavaScript search filtering. It should know exactly what you're referring to. Is my guess. This is the kind of this is the kind of feature that I really think in the next few weeks there'll be you know auto PR. I just saw something yesterday that you just uh, can run it on your repo and it'll just turn all your GitHub issues into it'll just try to write code for them. Yeah, you don't even need that search button, I guess, because <laughs> it's just doing it in real time. Oh, nice. What else is all changing here? That search you state. Is this like some React stuff? Yeah, it's all it's doing is adding those two functions search, handle search, and filter jobs. Predicting my errors. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Print everything. Uh, yeah, so it's only searching for the job title. Oh, it is okay. But if you wanted to, you can change it. You know, we can make it so that it's doing a job title and location. Job title. I assume those two are the most common anyway. Maybe specialty as well. But. Anything else uh, with the employment side? Let's just do specialty. This is why I think code is going to be no code. It's just like stuff like this where you want to be super specific about the UX. It's only like one line of code. You know, it's like not that much code to actually do. Uh, Frankly, like I've tried out some of these no code builders. Like even for this, like the very first uh, attempt at this was, uh, is it? Bubble, bubble, yeah. Um, and like, I could not figure it out for the life of me. Like, I still had to go through like the kind of like mental gymnastics of like building out a data model, which yeah, I already had like an idea for. Um, but it's like using ChatGPT to code is so far way easier than <laughs> trying to use Bubble and do it all manually. Well, there you go. Filter jobs, that function, I think, is just the only thing you need to replace. Two methods down. Oh, here. Okay. So this is a good one to just do a comparison, probably, and see what it actually, like in the git diff. By the way, now we know. Yeah, nothing has changed. Cool. There we go. That's sweet. Nice. Okay. I say, um, kind of going back to our Figma, let's like render this image and call it a day. Depending on the library, it might be possible that the JS library itself is able to do that magic transform of the, the data, right? Like it might be that you can just pipe it in. And so that's kind of what I would ask ChatGPT is like, given the data, how would I, you know, display it in the front end, you know, using JavaScript, you know, React, you know, as a bubble stack chart or stack bar chart or whatever this is called. Yeah, it's just a, I, don't, I don't know. This is the more PME than, but yeah, I think we're pretty close. Yeah. So you were thinking of actually like, trying to get it to render in the front end? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm just in a J JS library. Um, I mean, what is this matplotlib? Um, yeah, basically you're trying to replicate this, you know, but with JS. Why don't I just ask it? So this is the, I was just using this like an hour ago. Um, 
Yeah, maybe just say, you know, I have a website that, you know, da da da, da and see. Yes, I have a website that uses uh, All right, let's see how far we go. Front end, awesome. source, probably a front end source, salary chart. This is a wrapper for you. First install all the packages. Probably just install them on the front end, right? So it's still. Yeah, it's kind of slow. Sometimes I would kill, just kill it and start again with a control C. I don't know. Sometimes it just is weird. It should normally not get stuck that long. That's weird. Is that PM down or something? No, nothing. Weird. Kind of a bummer that this is getting hung. Yeah, I would ask ChatGPT about this. Meanwhile, maybe I'll look into this other library and maybe maybe see if they have a stack bar chart too. Take the cash. Okay. Probably means there's something to do with your internet connection is happening. Uh, actually, maybe not. Let me try my end if I just npm install some random thing. Hmm. Uh, it seems to be working. It did. It did hang there for a bit, but it's working now. On my end. Okay. Hey guys. Uh, so as you just saw, um, npm just got hung up, and we had to end the recording. Uh, we couldn't figure out why exactly that happened, but um, the solution was to just restart my computer. Um, but unfortunately, Sahil and I couldn't continue with the recording. So I want to conclude this uh, YouTube video and part three with a video showing that what I did in the couple of weeks, a few weeks after Sahil and I met. Um, so just as a refresher, uh, this is the, the minimum viable product that I set out to build uh, with Sahil. Um, this is uh, uh, where Sahil and I left off. Well, we tried to implement the salary chart component. Um, and this is actually the, the finished product uh, with the salary component, so the, the salary chart component. So I'll share for a quick second um, how I got that to work because it actually ended up being the most difficult aspect of this entire project. Um, and I think it uh, uh, resulted in some kind of clever uh, ways that you can use ChatGPT that I learned. So as an example, um, you know, uh, as you guys saw in the video, I already had working Python code. So my approach was to just share that Python code um, and then get ChatGPT to put this into a JavaScript, like a vanilla JavaScript um, product. Finally got that to work, um, but for the life of me, I could not get ChatGPT to just convert plain JavaScript to the React code. So here's what I actually did to solve that. Uh, I basically gave ChatGPT the working JavaScript code, um, and I had it. I basically said, "Okay, just enumerate the steps one by one." So everything from how we process and consume the input data to how we actually post-process the data and feed that data into the salary chart. So I'm just gonna scroll down. Um, that basically had, the result of that was ChatGPT gave me a bunch of requirements. And then all I did was feed those exact same requirements back to ChatGPT um, and asked it for code, you know, line by line, segment by segment. And finally we got it to work. So that was a really interesting hack that, you know, that took me probably two days of going back and forth, trying to get it to work. Um, but having ChatGPT tell itself effectively uh, how it should go about converting this code 
um, was a really interesting win. So, so with that, um, I will go ahead and walk through uh, some of the rest of the features that I put together uh, since this YouTube video. Now, I will I ended up writing an entire blog about this whole process and uh, uh, a whole tweet storm about uh, my experience working with Sawhill. So we'll link these in the, the YouTube description. Um, but yeah, this is the, the final product. So um, yeah, obviously added some styling, um, a working chart component with kind of hoverable interactions, um, allows users to uh, submit, submit their compensation and has all the proper error handling. Um, and shows all of the the compensation data once um, users actually provide it. So, you know, that's that's the finished product. It's now working live at outlier.care. Um, so thanks so much.